Never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. It was July 10th, 1940, and like William here, many civilians were enjoying a normal day, only to be caught off guard by a stuka flying overhead. This little skirmish would soon turn into a three-month battle, causing great damage and casualties to both the German and the British. The Battle of Britain has begun. Germany, led by Hitler and his totalitarian regime, was virtually mowing through all of Europe, the most recent to fall being France on June 25, 1940. Britain was the last stronghold, keeping Hitler from controlling all the seas and eventually allowing him and the Japanese to suffocate the United States from both sides. German plan for invasion of England. Phase one. Knock out the Royal Air Force and its bases. Get control of the air and the sea lanes across the channel. Follow the Blitz plan that had wiped out Poland, the Low Countries, and France. Destroy communication and transport lines. Above all, get command of the air. Phase two. Pulverize the coastline with dive bombers. Drop parachute troops to take over the airfields and establish beachheads. Actual invasion. Pour the German panzer divisions across in high-speed barges under an umbrella protecting fighter planes. Then send spearheads of armed might to divide, surround, destroy all opposition. That's all there was to it. The Ju-88 was by far Germany's most versatile aircraft. It could be used anything from dive bombing to an aircraft used for reconnaissance. The Do-17 was a light bomber built for speed. It could outrun almost any opposing aircraft. The Germans' primary aircraft was the Heinkel HE-111. It had decent speed and it had a bomb with medium strength. The Stuka was a specialized aircraft designed exclusively for dive bombing but was not much help in other facets. Germany's primary fighter aircraft was the BF-109E, which was small, but quite fast. The German Luftwaffe were divided into pairs. This allowed for easy maneuverability and overall protection. One could be always watching the other one's back. Although this maneuver was very effective, it could only be pulled off by highly trained pilots. Britain's Spitfire was a fighter which was very adaptable. It was the only aircraft to be used throughout the whole battle. Britain's fighters were organized into V-shaped sections. Then, four of these V-shaped sections were combined to create a very large, rigid V. Although many thought this tactic was very ineffective, it proved to work out for them as it only required one veteran to be in the group and many novices could learn on the go. Hitler's initial invasion targeted radar stations, airfields, and military bases. Initially, Germany took complete control of the battle. Their veteran fighters greatly took advantage of the inexperienced British pilots. Although the German Luftwaffe were very effective, the British defense stood strong and began to outlast their enemy. Because of this, the Luftwaffe began targeting major cities such as London and other big cities. They did this in hope of making London's morale plummet and therefore causing them to surrender.
The Straits of Dover would be an extremely strategic place for Germany to hold. It would allow them to set up a base on mainland England and eventually give them air supremacy. The battle consisted mostly of fighter planes. The Germans believed their superior veteran pilots would be able to take advantage of the inexperienced British pilots. The British defense, consisting of Spitfire planes, withstood the enemy. Eventually, Germany gave up and put their focus elsewhere. The attacks on London were catastrophic. Planes were attacking from all directions and buildings were falling down all the time. Although many cities were taking heavy damage, Germany's strategy backfired as British airfields and military bases were able to recover. If the battle were to go on the other way, Britain would have been forced to surrender, and the United States would soon follow. Then, Germany would be able to go one-on-one -on -one with the Soviet Union, eventually crushing with the them. the combined sea power of Germany, Britain, Italy, France, and Japan, he could control the seas and tell us where to head in. The torch of freedom flickered low. I see trees of green, red roses too, I see them blue. 